Hi, it's me, Anna again, and this is the final part of the series called How to Make a Truck in Ableton Live Light. Look how I developed the arrangement. My track is now three minutes long. It has longer intro and three drops with breakdowns in between. To add the locator, just right click on the timeline, add locator, and then type and press enter. What else have changed? I automated the LFO rate of my bass and also automated filters here and there. Uh, Drift Synth is now in audio format and in some places it lives on two audio tracks. Now it's time to mix my instruments with each other. First of all, I make sure that there are no low frequencies on my synths. I don't need anything below 80 Hz here because there lives my kick and bass. On the vocal track I cut off all what's below 120. I'm so... I'm so... I'm so bored. I want the synths to sound a little brighter, so I would add a bit more high frequencies and slightly reduce the mids. Boring. All the way while mixing the track, I listen to my instruments together in different combinations. I have two drum racks playing at the same time, so I need to make sure that they sound good together. If I place an effect right after the sample inside the rack, that sample is being processed separately. Next, compression. It makes instruments sound smooth and helps when there are some loud picking parts. I usually use this vintage view. I set the threshold from which level the compressor starts working. And then I add the output gain. Now the signal is compressed and this yellow indicator helps to understand how much compression is going on. I make sure that the compressor is just slightly touching the synth, not working all the time. I'm so bored. My vocal track definitely needs more processing to get settled in the mix. Let's add chorus on it. It's in the pitch in modulation folder and I like this warm ensemble preset. I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I would also add reverb here. Let's shorten the decay and adjust the filters. I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I'm so bored. Wideness of my instruments is another important thing. In the I.O. section of the tracks there's panning window and I can automate it on the synth so it moves from side to side in the stereo. To make the noisy synth wider, I'm using utility device. I put it in the first place and boost width. With the mono button of the utility, you can check your mix in mono. Everything should be audible. Now let's work on the levels. I adjust levels of my drums using chains of my drum racks. In the session view, everything looks more like a classic mixer. I turn down all the instruments and then bring the levels up, track by track. I usually start with bass, around minus 20, and then add drums, synths and the vocal track. Now I'm happy with the mix and I need to boost the volume on master. I go to utilities, audio effect track and there's mixing and mastering category. Here I found this nice master bright and edgy preset. I can adjust it a little bit, especially it's important to rise up the threshold to not over compress the track. Now finally my tune is ready for exporting. I drag my loop area to the region that I want to export and I make sure that there's no track in solo mode. Now I go to File, Export Audio, and here I can choose which track to export. Master track is here by default. I press Export, give it a name, and choose the destination folder. I saved my project with Command S, but if I want to share it with someone or open it on another computer, I press File, Collect All and Save. 
And now I'm sure that all the files are inside the project folder. That's it. In case you want to take a closer look at the project, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, hope you enjoyed this video series and see you again soon.